What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today we're in the brand new 2025 Infiniti QX60, courtesy of Infiniti of Mechanicsburg in Mechanicsburg, PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So today we're in the QX60 because believe it or not, out of almost a thousand reviews now, I have yet to review a QX60 until today at least. So that's exciting for me. Also, one major change for the 2025 model year and just flat out this is a dang good looking SUV so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are several different trim levels for the 2025 qx60 first one being pure starting at 50,200, lux for 56,800, sensory for 59,100, and lastly the autograph all-wheel drive starting at 66,150 dollars yes we do have the autograph with us here today and that is the only one that comes standard with all-wheel drive the other ones come standard with front wheel drive if you wanted to add all-wheel drive though you can do that simply add two thousand dollars to any of those prices but regardless of trim level that you go with the power plant on the qx60 is going to be the same and this is where the one big change for 2025 comes in there is no longer a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated v6 it has been replaced with the two liter turbocharged four cylinder which has been used on a lot of their other vehicles so far but power numbers come in at 268 horsepower at 5600 rpm 286 pound feet of torque coming in at 1600 rpm that power being sent to front wheels or all wheels there were nine speed automatic zero to 60 time coming in at approximately seven seconds flat with mpg numbers coming in at 22 in the city 28 on the highway for the front wheel drive 22 city 27 then on the highway for the all-wheel drive taking premium unleaded fuel and so before we do any kind of fun acceleration test here or paddle shifter test here in the qx60 i did want to mention to you guys the drive modes there is actually a silver toggle switch located just to the left of the shifter there drive modes will include personal sport auto eco and snow just things like the steering sensitivity the throttle response and the shift point so now that we got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find it straight away let's put the paddle shifters here to the test first and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us here all right so it looks like we do have a full manual shift mode you just slide the shifter back one more time that was cool it just downshifted all right it's so telling me i'm in first gear up on the digital gauges here in three two one go <laughs> that was interesting all right, there is a little bit of a delay to the paddle shifters, but it was kind of interesting. I don't think that shifted like anything else I've ever tested before. So when you hit the paddle shifters, it's just like, Room. it's like it was like a little bounce upwards and then it shifted. It was kind of interesting. It's just different. It's not a bad thing. It's just different. But having said that, this is a three row SUV. I don't think anyone's gonna actually gonna actually be using the paddle shifters. So there's that, but at the same time, I do like that they're there because if you're going down a hill and it's snowing out, you can use the paddle shifters to do a little bit of engine braking if you wanted to. So I like it for that reason. But anyway, let's go ahead and find one more straight away. Let's put the acceleration here to the test with the QX60 having full control. And let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, we are in sport driving mode in three, two, one, go. Oh, turbo leg. Mm. All right, it's okay. You shouldn't have any issues emerging onto the highway. Having said that, I think if it was me personally, I might have preferred the naturally aspirated V6 that they got rid of quite honestly because there was a little bit of turbo lag there. Having said that, it's something that you get used to. I've owned turbocharged four cylinders before in my own personal vehicles and it's nothing that bothered me over time. But having said that, I, I prefer the naturally aspirated engines. Typically, they're more reliable. You don't have the turbo lag at the beginning, but you do get better MPGs with the turbocharged engine. So I guess that's the trade-off, but it's okay. It gets the job done, but to go along with that acceleration as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 13.8 inch ventilated front discs in the back 13 inch solid rear discs. As far as that braking feel goes, it's actually really, really good. I have definitely been liking the braking feel in this thing. It's not a super firm braking feel, but it's not a soft one either. It's just right for what this vehicle is. So I'm a fan there. 
Then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get an independent strut type front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it has been perfectly fine on my short little test drive here today. Now I'm about to turn on to some rocks. I don't know how it's going to be then, but yeah, it's been absorbing the road at perfections perfectly fine. So no issues there. As far as steering feel goes, it does adjust dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. So you got something for everybody there. And cabin noise, you do get a little bit of engine noise when you really get on it, but the wind noise and the road noise definitely held at bay. So absolutely no issues there. Then touching on rear visibility, I can see pretty darn good out the back. Now we'll say the second row headrest, they are kind of massive. So there's that, but the good news is the third row headrest actually do tuck down and they are tucked down right now. So there's a little bit of blind spots in the back, but it's not too bad. It's something I could definitely live with, no doubt. And then touching on forward visibility a little bit, rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on the QX60. So whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. So just one less thing you gotta worry about there. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2025 Infiniti QX60. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2025 Infiniti QX60 finished in two-tone deep brdx whatever the heck that stands for that's what was on the window sticker it's a 900 dollars paint option in case you were curious i'm sure it's called something else online but that's what the window sticker said but let's go ahead and start with where the qx60 is made taking a look at the vin first character is the number five indicating that the qx60 is built and assembled here in the u.s at least for us u.s customers but starting up front let me start with this front grill because i think it looks stinking cool we got a samurai sword style front grill grill at least in my opinion i don't know what the actual name is for it but it's got this kind of slight arch to it so kind of looks like a samurai sword up front which is fitting for a japanese car so i really like that but you can get an led backlit emblem in the middle of that front grill if you were curious that goes to 465 dollars just like mercedes-benz tends to do quite often to the sides full led headlights meaning both low beam and the high beam come standard get led daytime running lights you get the automatic feature you also get automatic high beams so if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up the high beams for you there but overall like i said at the beginning of the video definitely a very good looking suv especially the front end like the headlight design is definitely on point but that pretty much rounds out the front end let's now go ahead and swing around to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of this one this definitely shows off that two-toned paint quite nicely with the black roof and the red being the rest of the vehicle. That's pretty stinking cold, but aluminum roof rails do come standard up top rear privacy glass also coming standard. Got a floating roof line on the, uh, the C pillar in the back there. That looks pretty good. Bicolor power adjustable side mirrors typically do come standard unless you go with the two-tone theme and then you get the gloss black Which is what you guys are looking at right now side mirrors will be heated with LED integrated turn signals And they're actually power folding for all trim levels as well Which you don't always get standard even on luxury automakers. So that's pretty cool I like the chrome accents found on the door handles and the uh, kind of side skirts down at the bottom with the infinity etched into them That looks good taking a look at the wheel setup 18 inch aluminum alloys coming with that pure trim level and then 20 inch aluminum alloys for all other trim levels across the board which is what of course you guys are looking at right now but that pretty much rounds out the side profile let's now go ahead and swing around to the back all right so but now since we are around to the back of this one all the way to the top you are looking at a gloss black shark fin antenna just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light just below that rear window wiper got led taillights coming standard on this one for all trim levels got the infinity lettering spelled out horizontally that definitely looks good as well and you guys can see the towing connector down there as far as towing capacity goes it comes in at 3500 pounds for the front wheel drive and then 6000 pounds for the all-wheel drive and then just below it all, there are dual exhaust outlets. They are tucked away, of course. But having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip.
All right, tip now since we are around to the back of the QX60, when it comes to opening that rear tailgate, a power tailgate actually does come standard for all trim levels. You gotta love that. And then a hands-free power tailgate for the sensory and autograph trim levels. But there is a button on the key fob, rubberized button is on the uh, tailgate itself then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity behind that third row at least comes in at 14.5 cubic feet. Of course, you can fold that third row down. There's actually some buttons in the cargo area to do that. That's gonna bump that up to 41.6 cubic feet. Then with all rows folded, 75.4 cubic feet. So that's a decent amount of space there. There is a 60-40 split, of course. You got some chrome plated tie down anchors. There's gross grocery bag hooks on both sides. You got to love that. And then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you're actually going to find a decent amount of in-floor storage to put maybe a tire inflator kit or a uh, ice scraper or something like that. So definitely pretty nice back there. But then making our way up to the third row legroom, that is going to come in at 28 inches even, which is not the best number on paper. For example, my Ford Mustang GT back in the day had 29 inches. So more than that. For reference, I'm going to give this a shot for you guys. I'm going to even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in the third row there. Good thing though is there is rear ventilation found in the ceiling of this one that goes through all three rows. You got cup holders for those third row passengers and actually USB charging ports as well, which you don't always get. So I liked seeing that, but then making our way up to the second row leg room that comes in at 37.7 inches. For reference, I'm still an even six feet tall. Nothing changed there. This is how much space I had in the second row. USB charging ports for the second row passengers. You actually have a 120 volt power outlet right next to that. That was pretty stinking cold. Rear window sunshades actually do come standard for all trim levels across the board though. That's pretty stinking cold. You don't always get that for sure. Heated rear seats for all trim levels but that pure, which is also very cool. Bench seating for all trim levels but the autograph, that's what we have. We have the autograph, so we got the captain's chairs with us here today. Little bit of storage and cup holder storage for the middle with our particular configuration. Overall though, second row is definitely very comfortable back there, but then make your way up to the front seats. Leather seating, all trim levels. Heated front seats, all trim levels. Ventilated front seats for the luxe trim level and up. And then massaging front seats for the sensory and autograph trims. That's pretty stinking cold. That's probably why these seats are so ridiculously thick. So overall, as far as seat comfort goes, it was 100% on point. When you got massaging seats and a million different ways to adjust these things with incredible power lumbar, that was incredibly adjustable in my, in my drive today. So huge fan of the seat comfort in this thing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for all trim doubles, 10 and two grips, definitely on the thicker side of things, which I like. And you actually do get a heated steering wheel coming standard for all trim doubles across the board as well. And I do like the flat bottom too. This is a nice little design element. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup. This is the first thing I noticed. This is a, a very unique key. I've never seen this style key before. So you got infinity on the one side, you got lock, unlock, the button to pop the rear tailgate there, the circular button, that's gonna be your uh, remote start, which comes on the Lux trim leveling up. But it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that silver push button start located just in front of the shifter. And so once started up, it is a full digital gauge cluster. It looks amazing. Cool thing about these gauges, and I only know this because I've never reviewed this car, but it's the same setup as what Nissan does, of course, as expected. But since Affinity is the luxury brand of Nissan, so you hit these three little buttons on the left side of the steering wheel, you press OK, and you can change the meter view, which is what it's called, to a pretty stinking cold gauge cluster. So you got a couple different options up there as far as the loadouts go. So I definitely was a big fan of that. Would have loved even more though, if they, uh, when you change the drive mode, adjusted the colors as well. So I'd definitely love to see that in kind of the next generation um, QX60 if they were to do that. But it's got everything you need up there though. There's how many miles you have left until you hit empty. Uh, trip A, trip B, of course, outside temperature, average miles per gallon at any given time. So everything you would expect to find on a digital gauge cluster. But now let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. Let me start with the panoramic moonroof for all trim levels across the board. Gotta love that. Home light controls for up to three different garage doors. That's for the Lux trim level and up. Tri-zone climate control for all trim levels air purifier system for the sensory and autograph. That was pretty cool. Wireless phone charger for all trim levels across the board. That's located just in front of the cup holders here. Speaking of, there's the cup holders. I'm gonna show that to you guys real quick. Then if you were to open up that center armrest, it's actually a decent amount of storage in there, quite a bit. You got a 12 volt power outlet as well. Kind of a tiered shelving system in there too. 
Gotta love the matte wood trim though. I think that looks so staking good on the passenger door there, just above the passenger side glove box. Just below that then you have quilted leather. That looks amazing as well. Gloss black finishes below that. Like a lot of really, really nice finishes in this thing. Like when you got quilted leather, you got the matte wood trim, you got everything at that point. That's pretty darn nice. And you have these indented Bose speaker covers too, which look amazing. And yes, we will be testing out that sound system in a little bit here, but let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen now. You are looking at a 12.3 inch touchscreen display for all trim levels across the board there. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming with that Android Auto Apple CarPlay, which by the way is wireless, so you gotta love that. Factory navigation system for the Lux trim level and up. Weather information for the Lux trim level and up. And of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. So when it comes to the sound systems, there are two of them. Nine speakers is going to come with the Pure. And then a 17 speaker Bose sound system is going to come on the Lux trim level and up. So you guys know that's the one we got. So let's go ahead and turn on the radio. Let's see what we got playing this morning. And let's test out the clarity of this one. <laughs> I haven't listened to that song in a long, long time, but yeah, that's plenty fine. One thing I always say uh, with Nissan and Infinity is they do bass ridiculously good. So plenty of bass there, plenty of clarity. Bose is a very reputable company. I had what I had a Bose sound system in my Infinity G35 coupe back in the day. Never failed me, never broke. So very reputable company there. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen at least is when you do put this one in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. But you also have that surround view monitor there for the Lux trim leveling up, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so to start, the QX60 is an IIHS top safety pick plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS. That pretty much says it all right there. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard. You got driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks top pressure monitoring system but also coming standard brake assist blind spot monitor lane departure warning and rear parking sensors as well then if you were to go with the lux trim level and up you're going to get front and rear parking sensors adaptive cruise control with stop and go driver attention monitoring system pro pilot assist and lane departure prevention as well so overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the qx60 excellent looks infinity crushed it with their design on this one definitely a very good looking suv very smooth shifting nine speed automatic i didn't say that in the driving portion yet but that's definitely the case very smooth transmission that's actually built in japan although the final assembly point is in the u.s the transmission is built in japan but of course i do have some room for improvements as well for the qx60 first thing is i would personally prefer the naturally aspirated v6 i wish they would have kept that as it was because of course that is going to be the more reliable engine with no turbo lag and although it doesn't get as good of mpgs as this new one i still would have preferred it that's just my opinion though also think multicolor ambient lighting would be quite nice in this thing i wasn't able to find any ambient lighting on this but all the other luxury manufacturers do it so i think that that would definitely go well at least in our autograph trim level that we had today and the last thing is the third row is uh 28 inches of rear legroom so that's kind of unusable i would probably just fold that third row down and never use it quite honestly but that's just me let me know what you guys think of the qx60 in the comments section below that's about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in new car reviews that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know i will see you guys all in the next video stay gold